It's believed that Dr. John Bradfield, the designer of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, got his inspiration from the Hellgate Rail Bridge in New York. But Sydney's bridge is a traffic, rail and footbridge. It's higher, wider and an Australian icon nicknamed the Coat Hanger. Construction began on Sydney's bridge on the 27th of July 1923. 79% of the bridge is steel was designed and fabricated by Dorman Long & Co Limited in Middlesbrough, UK. Then it was shipped to Sydney. The bridge arches are supported by four 300 tonne hinges capable of supporting 20,000 tonnes each. A complex wiring system supported the arches till they could be joined together. The Sydney Harbour Bridge was completed in eight years. On the 19th of March 1932, the bridge opened with a grand parade and bridge walk by thousands of pedestrians. Certificates were given to every walker who crossed the bridge. 1,400 daring men installed 53,000 tonnes of steel with 6 million rivets to build the bridge. Sadly, 16 men died while working on the bridge and 800 families were forced to relocate without compensation to make way for the bridge approaches. The first train across the bridge carried Dr. John Bradfield, the bridge's designer. The Bradfield Highway across the bridge is named in his honor. Pylons were designed by Thomas Tate and built from Tasmanian concrete faced with more Eura granite. While millions have crossed the Sydney Harbour Bridge, not so many have had the opportunity to enjoy a safe guided climb to the very top of the bridge to enjoy its exhilarating views 134 metres above the water. But now that's possible with Sydney's own bridge climb a company that supplies all equipment, safety training and qualified guides. Safety is paramount, so climbers are given a one hour training and evaluation course. There are also climbs in Mandarin for overseas visitors. With their training done, climbers now in jumpsuits head into the safety equipment room. Soon afterwards, fully equipped climbers head out for the bridge pylon a short walk away. Through a manhole in the road deck, they climb up to the start of the bridge arch. A short way up the arch, they admire the view while waiting for the rest of their group to catch up. The solid safety harness with the comms pack and cable tie to the safety line is clearly visible from our position on the pylon as some in the group stop to chat to the guide. Sin Sin and Chi Chi turn back to give us a big smile and a wave. What I thought was very nice of the Bridge Climb Company was they gave us free entry tickets to the South Pylon so we could watch our relatives climb the bridge. Normally these tickets cost $15 for adults or $10 for children and seniors.
The views from the south pylon were impressive, so they must have been extraordinary from the top of the bridge. By the time we looked back at the bridge, Sinsin and Chi Chi were too far away to see, so we headed down to explore the pylon. The pipe music sounds very eerie, ghostly, as it resonates around the concrete stone rooms and bare steel stairways. There are figures of workmen, as they were, working on the bridge. No work safety or harnesses in those days. There is a small museum about the bridge's construction there are showcases of souvenirs to commemorate the bridge's opening, a replica of the scissors that cut the opening ribbon, and other memorabilia. And of course, the usual selection of Sydney souvenirs for sale. After a slow walk back to the bridge climb office, we waited for Sin Sin and Chi Chi to return from their bridge walk. Again, there are plenty of souvenirs to choose from, plus photos of famous people who have climbed the bridge. Quite an impressive list. You go and greet them after. By the smiles and nods, it was obvious they really enjoyed their bridge climb. So, well done Sydney. And well done Sydney's bridge climb. <laughs>